Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Hydrogen-powered R44 demonstrator takes maiden flights. The Oshkosh organized chaos begins. United Slight School faces a class action. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Hydrogen-powered R44 demonstrator takes maiden flight. Unither Bioelectronics announced that its modified Robinson R44 helicopter made its airborne debut on March 27th. It was powered by PEM fuel cells and an electric motor, making it the first successful flight of a piloted hydrogen-powered VTOL. The company's hydrogen journey began nearly a decade ago, with the goal of developing a zero-emission vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. This would be used to transport its manufactured organs to hospitals for transplant surgeries. To do so, Unither Bioelectronics partnered with Tier 1 Engineering on a set of battery-powered ER-44s. The third-generation aircraft, using a Magni X Magni 250 motor, took a cross-country flight in October 2022. However, Unither Bioelectronics eventually decided that their ER-44s would not be capable enough to sustain longer missions. They ditched plans to gain a supplemental type certificate for the electric conversion and began looking for other sustainable power options. That's when the company set its sights on hydrogen fuel cells. Now, 10 months later, the modified R-44 technology demonstrator has successfully taken to the skies. Its first flight, piloted by Rick Webb out of Quebec's Roland de Sorti Airport, lasted 3 minutes and 16 seconds. Unither Bioelectronics revealed the achievement at the VFS H2 Aero Symposium in Long Beach, California. After the break, Spirit Airlines CEO resigns just after escaping bankruptcy. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Spirit Airlines CEO resigns just after escaping bankruptcy. Just weeks after low-cost carrier Spirit Airlines fought its way out of bankruptcy, CEO Ted Christie decided his work there was done. The operation will be led by an interim executive team as it progresses through a major rebrand. Christie had been with Spirit Airlines since 2012 as its chief of finance, stepping into the role of CEO in 2019. The carrier has lost upwards of $2 billion since 2020. Mental health in aviation proceeds to the House. Members of the U.S. Congress delivered the Mental Health and Aviation Act to the House of Representatives on April 2nd. This is the flagship bill of the pilot mental health campaign, working to break down barriers between aviators or air traffic controllers and mental health services. The Mental Health and Aviation Act was introduced to the House for the first time in September 2024 by Representatives Sean Kasten and Lori Chavez de Raymer. It aimed to address a long-running stigma against mental health talks in the industry. Air Force to bring U-2 Dragon Lady to AirVenture 2025. EAA announced that the U.S. Air Force will bring one of its most popular high-altitude intelligence surveillance reconnaissance aircraft, the Lockheed U-2 Dragon Lady, to this year's AirVenture fly-in and convention for the week of July 21st through 27th at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. The U-2 will fly from Beale Air Force Base near Yuba City, north of Sacramento, California, and will be on display the entire week to commemorate the aircraft's 70th anniversary, first flying in August 1955. Elixir delivers first of 12 aircraft to Ignatia Aviation. Elixir Aircraft delivered the first of 12 aircraft ordered by Greek flight school operator Ignatia Aviation, rented through its leasing company, Green Aerolease. The Elixir was flown from its production site in La Rochelle, France, to the show. The keys were handed over to Dimitris Limperakis, founder and CEO of Ignatia, by Cyril Champenois, co-founder and head of sales for Elixir Aircraft. 
That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. The Oshkosh organized chaos begins. The EAA has finalized its arrival schedule for herds of like aircraft to fly into the 2025 air show. While many other coordinated arrivals will inevitably be arranged by various aviation communities, the EAA has organized group fly-ins including Moonies, Bonanzas, Cessnas, and Cherokees. They will all make their way into Oshkosh within 10 to 20 minute blocks on the Saturday and Sunday leading up to the official air show kickoff on Monday, July 21st. Mooney Caravan 27 was given the first arrival block. All aircraft are expected to make their way to Dane County Regional Airport on July 17th. Pilots will receive several briefings before taking off in sync. Their mass arrival at Whitman Regional begins at 10 a.m. on July 19th. The Bonanzas to Oshkosh crew will meet up at a specific B2 Osh ramp at La Crosse Regional Airport. They will arrive at the air show three hours after the Moonies at 1 o'clock on July 19th. The Cessnas to Oshkosh gang were given the 5 p.m. slot. They'll gather at Juneau, Wisconsin's Dodge County Airport and fly around 35 miles north into Oshkosh. Saturday, July 20th, will bring in the Cherokee clans. Cherokees to Oshkosh will fly from central Wisconsin airport and touch down at Oshkosh at noon. After these messages, United's Flight School faces a class action. Meet the first of a new generation of the M-Class family. The M700 Fury, an aircraft worthy of the name and indomitable force. The M700 Fury transcends traditional limits with more power, blistering performance, a finely appointed interior, and the luxury of what matters most, time. Experience the Fury. Join the legacy. DirectFly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single-engine, two-seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple, all-metal aircraft design provides low-maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Welcome back. United's Flight School faces a class action. A recent class action lawsuit against United Aviate Academy claims that the program was in reality painfully underfunded and short-staffed. It looks to represent all students that attended the academy within the last three years. United Aviate Academy is advertised as an accelerated flight training program that includes ground school, simulator training, and flight training to give pilots a direct pipeline to United Airlines. Two dozen of the program's former students have filed a 39-page lawsuit against the Academy, claiming that it misrepresented its offerings in a big way. The case alleges that United drew in students with its big-name charm, taking tens of thousands of dollars in exchange for an overcrowded, under-resourced flight training program. It states that UAA couldn't keep a sufficient number of flight instructors staffed. The issue was further aggravated by a lack of aircraft, with one student noting that he went weeks without training since there were only around 20 planes for 500 students. To make matters worse, the Academy ignored its 325-person capacity and, according to the suit, went from, quote, 338 students to 382 students in March 2024, end quote. This, along with its seemingly unstable financial situation, earned UAA a stern warning from the Accrediting Commission of Career Schools and Colleges in May 2024. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.